Let's get down, let's get down to business Give you one more night, one more night to get this We've had a million, million nights just like this So let's get down, let's get down to business Mama, please don't worry about me Cause I'm about to let my heart speak My friends keep telling me to leave this So let's get down, let's get down to business Let's get down, let's get down to business Give you one more night, one more night to get this Alright, it's Saturday morning here in Sedona. Uh, it's really windy in Flagstaff, so we came out down super early. Uh, we're gonna do a pretty intense track session, kind of getting ready for 10K, 5K fitness with the goal of a couple 10Ks coming up. Uh, doing two mile, mile 12K, 8, 4, all with descending pace, decent rest, three to four minutes between reps. Uh, but just really ripping it and getting after it with Bia here. Um, earlier this week we hit some big threshold on Wednesday, uh, nine miles of work in the morning and some more in the, in the afternoon. Uh, we're kind of in the throes though now. It's gonna be like a little four week big block before my racing season and then it's race season and then it's hopefully road to Paris. Bro, I'm nervous. I'll probably... I'm low key nervous. Start with I'll be I'll be cursing my own name here in like 20 minutes. You ready, Bia? So let's get down, let's get down to business. Let's get down, let's get down to business. Give you one more night, one more night to get this. We've had a million, million nights just like this. So let's get down, let's get down to business Let's get down, let's get down to business Give you one more night, one more night to get this We've had a million, million nights just like this So let's get down, let's get down to business I was cramping in my cat Oh, last turn. No, it's fine. 59. Good job, Ia. What a day. Yeah, hey, man. Good day. Jeez. I was scared. My, my calf started like twitching. I, I, this I just twitch right here. I thought you pulled something out. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I started twitching, so I was like, don't force it. You don't need to sell your soul for a one rep of workout. That's a good thing, man. Blanks, kiwi flavor. <laughs> Shout out, Mike. All right, we were 908 for two miles. Then I was 424. Then I was 317. That 12 was definitely the hardest rep. Then it was 240, 207, 59. All with three to four minutes rest for me. Bia did a little bit more on two of the reps. Where I did a mile, he did 2K. Where I did 12, he did a mile. And then the rest was all the same. But, dude, that's that's a workout I need in order to be, you know, 10K, 5K fit is these types of reps, long intervals, where you feel like crap from the start of a rep because you still got lactic from the last one and you're just practicing running through that. So it's great for the goals we have this spring and just training purposes. Evo distance. Uh, Long distance elite, my sub four spike. So, got me a sub 60, so they're good for sub 60. Like I would notice it, but I didn't feel like I felt the difference in effort change, you know? Uh-uh. I'm Matt McElroy, I'm Rory's friend. <laughs> I'm a triathlete, and uh, yeah, I train a lot more than him. <laughs> it's true, he does. He's got a few workouts with the crew. Some 800, some Ks. I feel like you've done a couple things. Yeah. All right, let's cool down. Yeah, so I'm getting ready for a half marathon and two 10Ks, but uh, coming out of marathon training, 
One thing Ryan likes to emphasize is the 5K, 10K training zones because it's something you can't emphasize when you're getting ready for a marathon. So that's been kind of the emphasis, even though I'm getting ready for half marathon and 10K, I'm kind of working on like 1500 to 10K specific training stimulus. The workout down in Sedona, we, we hit more of that 5K zone and got some VO2 max work, which is really fun to do. And that's kind of been more of the emphasis lately. All right, so here we are. I think it's April 4th. <laughs> and we are gonna do some track work. Uh, it'll be roughly half marathon 10K type stuff. So we'll do a three mile tempo to kick it off at a very aggressive pace for up here, 440. And then we'll do a four minute break, three by mile at five to 10 seconds faster than whatever I average for the tempo. And then we'll hit two 400s in 60 seconds, trying to just work on that turnover again. Uh, but yeah, it should be good. Should be good for my upcoming 10Ks and half marathon just to kind of run these paces and get comfortable finding that line. So pretty excited for this one. It's solo effort today, but we got the atmosphere of Flagstaff. We got NAU out here, so it should be fun. Right now, training is back to the normal rhythm where I'm going to see Jesse twice a week for strength. I'm doing two or three uh, key sessions a week. My volume has reached like a, a decent place where it's a, at 100 plus a week now uh, after building slowly towards that. And I'm starting to find that like normal grind and rhythm where I'm trying to oscillate between training hard enough to get the stimulus we're looking for and not burying myself. And that's especially hard when you're training 5K, 10K work up at 7,000 feet. Next up is the Gifu Half Marathon in just under three weeks from now. Um, it's just a really cool opportunity. More than anything, I hadn't been to Japan. Uh, it's a good race that I can try to mix it up with some top, uh, it's a world elite label race, which just means that they bring in a very world-class field every year. So it'll be a good opportunity for me to raise my standard of who I'm trying to compete with. Uh, heading into an Olympic training cycle where I, I just want to mix it up with people that are, are better than me. And so this will be a great race to compete, throw out the stopwatch and just see what I can do. Um, and it'll set me up well for my championship races that I'm getting ready for after the fact. But I've been getting my ass whooped for lack of a better word <laughs> uh, in training and tr training has been super hard. This is not, I've become like more comfortable doing marathon training than track training and, and shorter stuff training. It just feels like it takes a lot more out of my body to push that VO2 max, push those faster paces now at this point, um, which is important to still do. And I think that if I, want to keep improving in the marathon i have to keep doing this but yeah i mean i feel like uh multiple times in this video you're gonna see me hands on knees complaining <laughs> and feeling like uh like i'm getting you know waterboarded or something out there it's 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 been tough so i'm starting to see that like the adaptations and things start to regulate but yeah the first few weeks of really intense training are always the toughest i've been running six days a week with one rest day every week uh, and doing just over a hundred. I did 101 last week, 103 the week before. So back to back hundred mile weeks for the first time since the marathon with the high intensity makes it for a pretty dense week in six days, so. Yeah, how are you feeling after that? Uh, tired. Yeah, man, it was not a smooth day coming off of one day rest between sessions at 7,000 feet. That's never easy task, so. I felt like I was running through mud most of the day, but I hit it pretty much bang on. Little, little slower than I would have liked for the three mile tempo in the miles, only by a second or two a mile though. So that's with the wind probably negligible. So it was a good day, good workout day. Just good to get one on the board and get comfy running tired. Yeah, so this week was a big one, man. We got. Tuesday workout, Thursday workout. Tuesday was threshold based in the morning, 200s in the afternoon. Today's aggressive threshold. And then Sunday is really chill threshold. So a lot of threshold this week. So 
So I've been working with Rory for just over a year now, and I was drawn to coaching runners at the beginning because they're the most injury prone athletes on the face of the earth. So I just wanted to see if I could make a difference in that stat. As the season progresses, we start going from a connective tissue cycle into a uh, tissue acquisition cycle and then into a power cycle. And then after that, we're just trying to maintain until he goes to that marathon. So as his training ramps up, the demands of the training change. A year ago, I was pretty banged up and injured, had to withdraw from the London Marathon, and that's when I found Jesse, uh, my strength coach now. Through word of mouth around town, he was a guy that I thought I would give a try just to see if I could find health. And originally it was just for treatment massage, but then he, he does uh, strength training as well as massage, and he had recommended that I come in and start working with him. And at first I was skeptical. I'm, I'm not one to just trust peop new people. I've, I kind of keep a tight circle, but I realized that he does think about the human body and the athlete in a very different way. And I really appreciated that I could tell he was trying to be nuanced and trying to really solve real life problems that runners have. And uh, I've been the healthiest I've been under him and been able to train at the highest level. And I don't think that's uh, by coincidence I think he's been a, become a large part of my team and he's become a great friend and mentor and I'm really really thankful that I found him when I did. So mainly for him it was uh, starting to stabilize the hip from the inside out meaning from the hip capsule and then the external rotators and then all the muscles on the outside of the hip and then specifically working on core and core rotation that was the biggest thing that we got from him specifically like lats and anterior rotators strength training is injury prevention but it's not necessarily prevention it's mitigation so we're doing everything we can to give his hips and his legs as much information as we can to where they can react as they need to because a majority of the time when people are getting injured it's because they don't have an accurate picture of their hip or their leg in their brain map and so then once they deviate from this typical range of motion that they're running in, that's when they start to get injured. Or when they start to go from major muscle groups and then start searching for smaller muscle groups that they don't have access to. That's when they get injured. So what we're trying to do is that tissue acquisition part where we're trying to get as many tissues as possible so that he can fail from the big tissues to the smaller ones and it'll be a seamless transition. Every time I come back from a, a break and rebuild into training, I always find that's the time where I'm I'm the most susceptible to injuries and things start to flare up and I'm like battling this like oh is this serious is this something I should put more emphasis on is this something I should back off for and and for this latest one coming off of Seville I found that like my feet and ankles and Achilles were all getting like kind of flared up and I was like is this this might be an issue that I need to focus on especially when I'm gonna be hitting the track more frequently something that I wanted to put a lot of emphasis on was foot strength, ankle mobility, and all this stuff. So I've recently gotten a few recovery tools to kind of bolster that. And by the way, I'm not, this is no paid collab. I literally just found this just like anybody and bought it. So I found the Foot Collective and I, I've been using this like balance stuff for, for uh, my feet. So this is the Soulmate or whatever that they have. Been rolling out my feet a ton with uh, this cork roller. And then my buddy, Matt McElroy, uh, triathlete guy, turn me onto this little blackboard where you do a lot of ankle mobility with this stuff and just been trying to strengthen my feet, my ankles, get mobilization in the feet and ankles more. And I've been doing like barefoot running uh, on the grass after sessions, whatever I can to kind of strengthen my feet and, you know, sharing this information with my uh, physios, with Jesse, anything just to kind of get ahead of it and spearhead it. And it's kind of become a little passion project now to make my feet as strong as physically possible. Um, I feel like I go through these phases in training but feet has always been something that I've valued uh, keeping healthy just because literally running every steps on your feet so you got to just emphasize foot health uh, above all else so the more awareness that he has in his body the more confidence he has in his body and the more confidence he has in his training also here but also with his running so that was the biggest thing is that he's just going forward without fear of getting injured Yeah, so long run mixed with the threshold today. Kind of a first glimpse of marathon type work. 
obviously I'm not training for a marathon yet, but it's important to kind of keep this kind of stuff in the arsenal for even half marathons. I'm doing five mile warm up, 10 miles at like a smooth tempo marathon type effort, and then a three mile cool down. So I've been my longest run since Seville and a good, you know, strength day for the upcoming half marathon three weeks from today. Project, project, this ain't what you want. This ain't what you want. Ha! 1600 block. I just wanna rock. I just wanna. Ah, 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 ah. I just wanna rock. Body out of ya. Shorty got that body out of ya. Uh, uh, hit it once, no time. Side up, fuck, you gon' kill my vibe. Stand on my money, don't know my size. Pick them sides. And you better choose wisely. That's my heart. One, two, three, four, throw up your five. Uh, solid. Um, big, big week of training. Last two weeks have been over 100 miles for the first time post-marathon. So anytime you have an increase in volume, even if you're used to that volume prior, just your body settling back in, it creates, a, I don't know, an adjustment period. So having solid sessions on top of the increase of volume um, is good. 10 miles today, probably 507-ish average, 508 maybe. Not my fastest by any means, but it wasn't the intent to run your fastest threshold. But uh, yeah, big week within the last few weeks and uh, gonna take tomorrow completely off. Try to absorb all this work and get back to the grind Tuesday. Yeah, so something uh, Ryan and I discussed after Seville going into this next training block was that we believe pressure in the Seville race and the, the Seville build were really positive actually like the, the pressure I felt to perform became like almost like this power of like uh, it's hard to explain but like I just felt like I needed to do it like I needed to run the best race I've ever run and I felt like every day was so important I was so focused and that's not something you can sustain forever but I think it's something you can cultivate when you need it and draw draw it out of yourself when you need it so the question Ryan asked me after is like, well, how do we find that like same intensity and pressure going into every race? You know, obviously not every race is for an Olympic uh, standard or for something that large, but maybe you can take that mentality that you had in that race or that mentality you had in that build and, and insert it in when it's necessary. Again, it's not sustainable. You can't always be like the most dialed in you've ever been, but I think the principle of just like embracing pressure, embracing nerves, embracing, you know, that desire in a way that is positive, not negative and fearful.